following along here, you probably already know how to make a movie. We've done this several times in the previous chapter. Simply select a clip, say in a project panel, go to File, Export, Movie. Likewise, you could also select a sequence here in the project panel, or just select the timeline window and go to File, Export, Movie as well. So in this movie, I'm going to give you a little bit more about how to make better movies. Now, I've been saying that you can select the sequence or the movie clip and then hit File Export, but I didn't really talk about the difference between the two, which is actually pretty key. Now, whatever you have selected when you go to File Export, that's what will be exported. So, if I select the sequence, it'll export the sequence. If I select the movie clip, then it will export the movie clip, which is actually a really good way to re-encode footage. If, for example, you have an AVI file and you want it to be a QuickTime movie, well, you could just import it into Premiere and re-encode it. No need to add it to a sequence or do any of that. So I'm going to select my sequence and go to File, Export, Movie, and I'll click on Settings. And another thing I want to focus on is this. Range, entire sequence is what it's selected by default, meaning that it's going to render our entire sequence out. But if I click this drop down, you'll see that we have another option, Work Area Bar. Well, this is something we haven't talked about quite yet. I'm going to hit cancel on these buttons here and get back to my timeline. The work area bar is actually this gray bar right here. By default, it stretches to the length of the sequence. But we can click on these edges, and the same way we trim a regular clip, we can trim the work area. Click on the center to move it around so we get the little grab icon. And now, if we were to render this, and if we were to select work area only, it would only render this little area here where the work area bar is. Maybe you have a movie clip that's, let's say, 90 minutes long, and you only want to export a little 20 second clip somewhere. You could use the work area bar to make that as quick as possible. Now, just a couple other things to be aware of here. I could also go to File, Export, and not just export a movie, but I could also export a frame or audio. Now, nine times out of ten, you'll want to export your movie. But there's so many times where you'll want to render just a frame. Let's say I want to show a client a clip of a particular scene. I want to get his feedback about the colors or whatever else is going on. I can select frame and export just this still frame. That would be the current frame here that we're seeing in the program monitor. It would export this one frame as its own image file. Or maybe we want to export just the audio track. We can do that here as well. So, I know that you've probably already figured out how to export movie clips, but again, this ability to select exactly what you want to export is really key. Do you want to re-encode a movie clip here in your project panel? Do you want to save just a still image, a frame, audio, or do you want to use the work area bar to render just a section of your video? These are key to being able to export from Premiere. In the next movie, I'm going to show you another area of the program called the Adobe Media Encoder. Using the Adobe Media Encoder, we could output to a specific media, such as DVD or the web. So let's go take a look at that. Know when exporting that you're going to a specific medium, like the web or DVD, Blu-ray, that type of thing. You wouldn't want to go to File Export Movie. You want to go to File Export Adobe Media Encoder. From here, we could select the additional formats, such as Flash Video, H.264, H.264 for Blu-ray, MPEG-2, and MPEG-2 for Blu-ray or to DVD. Now, let's just take MPEG-2 for an example, but it's just going to create a regular MPEG-2 file. However, if we selected, let's say, MPEG-2 Blu-ray, you'll notice that once we select that, that we have a list of presets here that are specific to Blu-ray. Say, for example, this 1440 by 1080i. If we were to go to MPEG-2 DVD, under the presets, we have no such options. DVDs don't play back video that big. So when we select MPEG-2 DVD, we have options that will fit for our MPEG-2 DVD. Now in the following movies, we're going to be looking a lot at a few of these formats, particularly H.264, so I'll leave that alone for right now. Be aware that we can check or uncheck video or audio. For example, if I unchecked audio, I'd export only the video. Also, we get a summary here, which is very helpful to see at a glance all of our settings for video and audio. And I say all these settings. It's not really all the settings, but it's pretty much the core ones that you really care about. And again, you'll notice as I uncheck audio, it says no summary available because I'm not exporting audio. So this summary area is very convenient. Now, our source 
and our output are inextricably linked unless we select certain formats, say for example H.264. If we select H.264, which is a really common format for mobile devices, then we might want to resize here. See, we have our source here that's 720 by 480, but our output is 176 by 144. So we might want more control over how those 176 by 144 pixels export. So we can click in the center to move this box around, click on these edges to resize. We can also come to these tabs on the right hand side for additional options for video, audio, and other options. Also, don't forget the Open in Device Central checkbox here if you have H.264 selected as a format. Now you might go through a lot of effort and headache setting up something for a particular medium. Well, don't do the same thing twice. See this little save icon here? If you click that button, that will save whatever your settings are right now as a preset that you can then use over and over again. If your preset, after saving it, doesn't show up in this list, then you can click this little folder icon to import a preset. So this is the overview of the Adobe Media Encoder and again the next few movies are going to be delving a little bit more in depth into what exactly we can do here. The Adobe Media Encoder and we're going to talk specifically here about Flash Video. Now the presets here are the key to working with Flash Video. And typically Flash Video is going to be going out to the web so you want to select a preset that will match your typical web viewership. Say I want to speak to people that are on a 56K modem. Maybe you're doing a website for life insurance. Well, a lot of those people are probably going to be older, a little antiquated. Maybe they still have a 56K dial-up. So if you click on 56K, you'll see that this will create a 160 by 120 size document. And the file size will be 113K. That's pretty small for a movie. Let's say you're doing a website on internet gaming. Chances are people are going to have broadband. You can probably safely say 768K is a good speed. So if we click on that, we'll see that the document actually expands to 640 by 480 and the file size will be 1.3 meg. Still not too bad for video, but significantly bigger than what we saw with the 56K preset. So you see the difference between the two presets and again, you want to be aware of your target audience. Before I close this movie up, I want to give you a few tips on working with Flash Video. First of all, in this video section, we can select the video codec. The first codec that was available with Flash Video was Sorensen Spark. The new codec onto VP6 works much better. But again, it's all about who you're speaking to. If you're speaking to an older audience, Sorensen Spark might be a little bit safer. You could also include the alpha channel if you're exporting to FLV by clicking this checkbox here. Also, if you know you're going to be outputting to Flash Video, try not to work on pre-compressed video. Flash Video compression is very powerful, but sometimes it can exaggerate the artifacts created by other forms of compression. So try to work on as high quality of video as you can, and then at the end, output to Flash Video. Also remember that clean cuts work the best with flash video. Transitions tend to look really ugly and they definitely add file size as well. So avoid transitions, use straight cuts from clip to clip. And finally, remember that Adobe Bridge can be a great friend here. At the time of this recording, FLV files don't have wide support in most video players. You have to download a special tool usually to watch flash videos just by themselves. But Adobe Bridge can also view FLV flash video files. So that's what you need to know about flash video. The biggest trends in recent days is to post videos on the internet. With YouTube and Google Video and MySpace, people want to put their mug all over the place. Premiere makes it very easy to do that. What we need to do is, in the Adobe Media Encoder, change the format to H.264. And under Preset, you'll see that we have presets for Google Video, MySpace, Yahoo Video, and YouTube. Now, I do a fair amount of MySpace, and don't get me wrong, but I'm not really sure how MySpace Video works, so I'm going to click on YouTube. And once you select that preset, as you can see from the summary, it sets all of your ducks in a row, gets everything in order for you to just to hit OK, and export this, ready to go to YouTube. Now, I know it's hard to believe, folks, but that's really all there is to it.